In everyday life, we like to talk about how fast objects travel. And when we do so, we talk about an object's speed, which is abbreviated with a lowercase s, and it's calculated by taking the distance the object travels, and we divide it by the time it takes for the object to travel this distance. Now this relationship is often called the average speed of an object over this distance, because the speed an object travels over this distance could be greater than or less than this calculated value, but over this distance the speed averages out to be one number. As an example, suppose we graph the speed of an object as a function of time versus time. Then if we were to look at the motion of an object, then most objects start out from rest, that is from an initial speed of zero, increase over some interval of time and then decrease back to zero. Now over this interval of time we can calculate something that we call the average value which we calculate using this relationship that says the average speed is the total distance that this object travels divided by the total time it takes to travel that distance. And this value would look like this. And one of the things that you should see from this graph is that there's really only two periods of time where the average speed of this object is actually what we calculated using this relationship. There's going to be periods of time where the speed is less than the calculated average value. Then there's going to be periods of time where the object's speed is greater than the average value of the speed. But one way to characterize the speed of this object over this interval is to give its average speed. And this relationship is very important because you might want to talk about your average speed to school in the morning versus your average speed to school on your way home at night. And you don't want to talk about the individual details of your trip as you went from home to school or from school back to home. Now what I'd like to do in the remainder of this video is talk about a special type of motion and that's referred to as constant speed and then later in this video I'll talk about constant velocity. Now a speed versus time graph for something traveling with constant speed would look just like this. And for something traveling at constant speed one of the things that you should notice is that the speed doesn't increase or decrease over this interval of time. The speed remains the same. So constant speed means that the speed over the interval doesn't increase or decrease and it means that the object is traveling equal distances in equal periods of time. So let's do an example. Suppose you had a car that started out at this point right here, which we'll call the origin, and then traveled to this point right here. First notice that I'm going to measure the distance that this car travels by measuring the distance from the same point on the car. In this case, I'm going to measure the distance from the front of the car to the front of the car. Now let's say it takes five seconds for the car to travel from this point to this point right here. So the change in the time, or the time it takes for this car to travel this distance, is going to be five seconds. Then using my definition of constant speed, which is the distance this car travels divided by the time it takes for this car to travel this distance, and this car is going to travel a total distance of 10 meters, and it's going to take a time of five seconds for this car to travel between this point right here and this point right here, then the speed is going to work out to be 10 divided by five is two, and the units to measure this is going to be meters per second. So this car is going to travel at a constant speed of two meters per second. Now one way to think about constant speed is if this car is going to travel at a constant speed of two meters per second, then after one second this car is going to move a distance of two meters from its starting point. And again, notice that I'm measuring the distance that this car travels from the same point on this car. And now after one more second, this car is going to travel an additional two meters. And so every second this car travels a total distance of two meters. Now it doesn't matter what distance we use to calculate the speed of this object. Suppose we used this distance to calculate the speed. Then it took one second to travel from this point to this point, and one more second to travel from this point to this point, or a total time of two seconds to travel four meters. Then we would still calculate the speed to be two meters per second. So in this case, the total distance would be four meters, and the time it took to travel four meters was two seconds. So in this case, we'd still calculate the speed to be four divided by two is two meters per second. In everyday language, speed is a useful concept. You can talk about how fast you traveled to school or how slow you traveled when you were stuck in traffic. But in physics, there's a more useful way to discuss the motion of an object, and that is to give the object's velocity. In this video, we're going to talk about motion in just one direction. In this case, we're going to talk about motion in the x direction. And so an object can move with velocity in the positive x direction, or the object can move with negative velocity, which would be in the negative x direction. So one of the things people often ask is, why use velocity over speed? Both quantities tell us how fast an object is traveling. But velocity tells us not only how fast something is traveling, but in what direction the object is traveling. So it tells us more information about the motion of an object. So in this video, I want to limit my discussion to the concept of constant velocity, and I'm only going to consider motion in the x direction. So in this case, velocity is defined to be the change in the object's position divided by the time it takes for that object to change its position. Now this quantity right here is referred to as the displacement of an object. It has direction and magnitude. And in this case, I'm only going to be considering motion in the x direction. And so we can rewrite this as the final position minus the starting position divided by the time it takes to go from this position to this position. 
So one of the things that this definition allows is for this value to be greater than or less than zero. And to demonstrate that concept, let's look at a few examples. So let's suppose we have an object that starts out at this point right here, which is two meters away from some origin. And then this car is gonna to travel to this point right here, which is eight meters away from the origin, or a distance of six meters away from its starting point. Again, notice that I'm measuring the distance that this car travels from the front of a car. Also notice that I can talk about the object's displacement, which is not only the distance that this object travels, but it's the direction in which this object travels from its starting point. So in this case, this object's displacement, or delta x, which is its final position minus its starting position, which has direction, which in this case would be eight meters minus two meters at starting point, or a total displacement of plus six meters. Now let's suppose it took two seconds to travel from this point right here to this point right here. Then we can calculate the velocity of this car by taking its displacement divided by the time it took to move from its starting point to its final point, which in this case was six meters divided by the time it took to travel that distance, which was two seconds, which in this case will work out to be three meters per second. So this is the object's velocity. And if this object is traveling with constant velocity, what that means is, this, is that this object's gonna move a distance of three meters every second. So in this case, this car's gonna go from two meters to five meters, or in this case, Every second, this car is going to move in the forward direction by three meters. And after one more second, this car will move an additional three meters in the forward direction. And that's what it means for an object to have positive velocity. It means it's going to be moving in the positive, in this case, x direction. So this object has positive velocity. Let's take a look at a car that has negative velocity. So in this case, let's have a car that starts out at this point, which is eight meters away from the origin over here. And then this car is going to move in this direction and wind up at this point right here, which is two meters away from the origin. So notice that as this car moves from this point right here to this point right here, it's gonna be displaced in the negative x direction. And so we can calculate its displacement by taking the final position minus the initial or the starting position, which in this case is gonna be two meters because this is where the car is gonna end up, minus the starting position, which in this case is eight meters. And in this case, two minus eight is gonna work out to be negative six meters. So this car is gonna travel a distance of six meters in the negative x direction. And let's suppose that the time it takes to go from this point right here to this point right here is two seconds, just like in the previous example. Then in this case, this object's velocity, which is the object's displacement, divided by the time it takes to go from its initial point to its final point is gonna be negative six. Notice I have to indicate the direction in which this object's traveling with the negative sign. And then I'm gonna divide that by the time it takes to go from the starting point to its final point, which is two seconds, which in this case, negative six divided by two will work out to be negative three meters per second. So this object's velocity is negative three meters per second. And the negative sign is gonna indicate the direction in which this car is gonna travel. In this case, it's gonna travel in the negative x direction. And so after one second, this car is gonna travel from eight meters to five meters. And so in one second, it's gonna travel a distance of negative three meters. In one more second, it will travel an additional negative three meters. And this is what it means for an object to have negative velocity. It means it's gonna travel in the negative, in this case, x direction.